Zion Williamson has been playing the best basketball of his career, but I'll tell you why he ascended to superstar status on national TV. And he got some help along the way in a huge Pelicans win over the Sacramento Kings. It's locked on Pelicans. Let's go. You are locked on Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at NOLA Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on a Friday. Maybe the last show of the week, maybe not. There might be a bonus show coming coming to you after the Pelicans in a weird but important game beat the Sacramento Kings 135-123 in pole position, controlling their own destiny for the sixth seed. Zion Williamson in this game became a superstar. He did something that a couple years ago we probably wouldn't have expected. I'll break it down for you in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. We'll also look at C.J. McCollum, his big-time performance. A lot of people owe C.J. McCollum apologies. And then what needs to happen for the Pelicans to get the sixth seed because it's coming becoming even more clear. And they don't even necessarily have to win out. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well. And if you want to come watch Locked On Pelicans recorded in person, we're doing it Monday. The 15th, 7 p.m. Central in conjunction in a joint effort with the Pels 12 fan group here. I'm going to have Aaron Summers on the show, Rel Myers on the show. I can probably say it now, Will Guillory of The Athletic on the show as well. We're going to do a live in-person recording. It'll be here as well. Do not miss it. We'll get you set for the playoffs or the, the play-in tournament, whatever it is that the Pelicans fall in. We're going to cover it. See you at 7 p.m. Mid-City Yacht Club on Monday. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. So let's get into it because this was as big of a win as you could get for the New Orleans Pelicans for reasons that are going to tie into the third segment of today's show. 135-123, the Pelicans beat the Sacramento Kings. After racing out to a 20-point lead, that got erased, and you knew Sacramento was going to come into this one really wanting to beat New Orleans. This is one of the rare occasions, I don't think it's happened since the mid-90s, where a team is facing a team five games in the regular season, and the Pelicans had a chance to go 5-0. and oh. It's tough to beat a team 5-0 in the regular season. Sacramento had a lot of pride. They did not want to lose this game and lose 5-0 in a season series. So they battled back, and New Orleans, to their credit, faced the adversity really well. Every time the Sacramento Kings kind of crept back into this, getting the score as close as two points, the Pelicans had an answer, and in the end were back up 20 late in the fourth quarter. But the main reason they got back in this game, or not back in this game, but started to really blow out the Sacramento Kings, was Zion Williamson in the third quarter. My goodness. So we've seen Zion do incredible things. He scored 17 points in the third quarter. We know he's capable of that, right? He's been by far playing the best basketball of his career. So why do I think this game was different? Why do I think he ascended a superstar status in this one? And here's why. He left the first half and went to the locker room injured with his left wrist. The refs weren't calling things. He was getting a lot of contact, goes to the ground hard, hurts his wrist, leaves the game, and now we're freaking out. And then to start the second half, he was out there on the court. His left thumb taped up, already dealing with a left in, uh, middle finger injury with all of that. And he plays through that. He plays through that. You know, every game going forward is basically like the biggest game of the Pelicans season. This one was one of them. And he plays through that to go six of eight from the field, five of five from the free throw line, two assists, one steal, one block, just one turnover, 17 points. The other stat that I think is incredible about this is he played the entirety of the third, 12, 
12 minutes played in that third quarter. For him to come back from the injury when the refs weren't giving him anything, really, in the first half, missing obvious calls, to kind of battle through that adversity is important. I told you the Pelicans were going to need to face this. We talked about it in literally yesterday's show if you're an everydayer. This is why you got to listen to Locked on Pelicans Monday through Friday. I said, you're not going to get some of the calls you want. And you need to just deal with it. Deal with it. Yeah, it's not fair. It sucks. But you know what? They're not going to change a result of the game after the fact. So you have to deal with this. And so for Zion, instead of complaining, letting this get to him, taking him out of his rhythm or anything like that, just said, screw it. He pulled a Thanos, right? I'll do it myself. Says that literally at the, in the, you know, after credit scene in the first Avengers. I'll do it myself. And he did. 17 points in the third quarter for him. The next closest Pelican, by the way, in terms of points in that quarter was Jose Alvarado, and that's because of two dimes that Zion sent to him off of turnovers that led to three-pointers. Zion was incredible, not just in the third quarter, but in the game. But to do it when dealing with the refs who just weren't doing you any favors whatsoever, right? Zion didn't go to the free throw line once in the first quarter. He didn't go once in the first half. And to just deal with that when he should have been, right? To deal with that and go out and play the way he did in route to 31 points in this game is an incredibly uh, impressive performance here. And it's what we've wanted to see from him, right? This was kind of the moment he went from like a dude who is talented and having a really good season to, oh, when this guy wants to take over, he's unstoppable. And he did it in a variety of ways, right? Scoring at the rim, but then breaking out the mid-range jumper. This is the second game that he's done that. You're in the midst of trying to fight for your playoff lives to break out something that you could almost describe as experimental and have the confidence to do that, right? The, the, the audacity to do something like that even shows you at the level that he's at right now. And then getting the defensive effort from him in this game, the block, right? Late in the third quarter that led to them getting out and running. All of them. This was the game because it was on national TV and everyone saw it. Everyone saw it. My entire basketball timeline, right? On, on X, on Twitter, is talking about this game and talking about Zion Williamson's performances. I saw people from the Suns, the Heat, Others, other Locked On hosts talking about Zion and his defensive performance and what he was doing. This was the moment that I think, because it's on national TV, people will go, oh. They took note here and it's unavoidable now. You can't make the eating jokes, the weight jokes, or anything like that. The only thing you can say after this was, like, he's a superstar. Look at how good he is. There was nothing negative to say about him. And if anyone does that, right, they're just a fool at this point in time. This was the game because it's on national TV that he graduated to superstar status. And now the Pelicans are in pole position. They control their own destiny for the sixth seed and to avoid the play-in tournament. To finish better than a team with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal. Those are the only two teams, the Pelicans and the Suns, who can get the sixth seed at this point. Unbelievable performance. And this gives you a lot of energy, excitement going into the postseason and even probably next season for what this team is capable of doing. Let me know in the comments down below what you think the best part of this game from Zion was. What did you love the most? Was it the mid-range jumper? Was it him attacking the rim? Was it the defense? All of those things. Let me know in the comments down below. So coming up next, CJ McCollum was freaking awesome in this game. He's been awesome for a while, y'all. We've been trying to tell you here on Locked on Pelicans. Let's break down his game, Trey Murphy, and a couple of others coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about Stitch Fix. You know that instant confidence boost you get from an outfit that makes you look really good? That's what you're going to get with Stitch Fix. You can easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist that helps you find new on-trend favorites that will work for you. Just give your stylist your size, style, budget preferences, and then order boxes when and how you want, no subscription required. And they're going to send you five pieces picked just for you, outfit recommendations, and pro styling advice. Keep what works and send the rest 
back. Stitch Fix makes it all so easy. I, I don't like shopping. I don't like going into stores. I don't want to order things online because I don't know if they're going to fit. It's all just like a hassle, right? Stitch Fix already knows all about me, so the pieces I'm going to get are going to fit me. It's going to save me time and effort. And then you get outfits that are going to make you look really good. And if you don't love something, send it back. Shipping, returns, and exchanges are always free. So Stitch, a uh, style that makes you feel as good as you look, get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. That's stitchfix.com slash locked on stitchfix.com slash locked on. Today's episode is also brought to you by eBay Motors, my favorite here. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your vehicle alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performances. Whether it's window glass to replace an old window on a car. Maybe your brakes were leaking and you need to put all new brakes on your car, your old car, 50-year-old car. Maybe you just want to put a supercharger on it to make it go faster. LED headlights so you can see a little bit better. Whether you're into speed, power, and style, eBay Motors has you covered. I work on all of my cars. I get all of my parts from eBay Motors because they have over 122 million parts for your vehicle. You're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your vehicle alive over at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only. Only available to U.S. customers. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know. Tell a friend about Locked On Pelicans. This team's going into the postseason in pole position right now. Keep the car analogy going with the sixth seed here. It's going to be a lot of fun. These next two games matter a lot. We'll probably do a bonus show on Saturday. It might be a little bit late, but we'll get it out for you after the game against the Golden State Warriors to break down what's going on with that team um, and this team and where they stand with everything, even if it's a shorter bonus show. we got all the coverage here. And we're also going to do a live in-person show. You want to come ask me questions? You want to ask Aaron Summers questions? Will Guillory, Rel Myers of the Pels 12. We're going to be at Mid-City Yacht Club on April 15th. That's this coming Monday, 7 p.m. Central. A live episode of Locked On Pelicans. And then a live Q&A with the panel after. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to be there. It's going to be so much fun. I hope you'll join me as well for everything. So see you at Mid-City Yacht Club. I might even buy you a drink here. We also have like raffle prizes and everything that we're going to get at get out to y'all. So it's going to be like a fun pep rally for everything before the Pelicans go into the postseason. So let's keep talking about the Pelicans beating the Sacramento Kings, a much needed win, right? 135, 123. The NBA stats website just completely died on me at the worst possible time. Let me pull this up. But I know the stats off the top of my head because we're going to look at CJ McCollum here, who was flat out incredible in this game. A lot of y'all have been on CJ recently for his play, but if you look at the past 10 games or so, he's been really, really good. And during this game, when Zion was out, the person that kept them afloat was CJ McCollum. In the third quarter, when Zion's able to score 17 points, in the fourth quarter, when Zion can still push things a little bit, who's keeping this team going and how is Zion getting open? Because of the spacing from guys like CJ McCollum. 11 for 18 from the field. 31 points. The number that jumps out at you is 9 for 12 from 3. You, you'd probably say a guy who shoots 38% from 3 is a good shooter, right? Especially on volume. What about a dude who shoots 75% in a game here? Because that's what CJ McCollum just did. Oh, by the way, from CJ, 7 assists, 2 steals, not 1 turnover. Fan fantastic in this game in a game where they needed him to step up they needed anybody to step up because you had to get this win because now you make the kings desperate and that's really important for the pelicans getting the six seed we'll talk about that in the next segment here cj mccullum buried this team i've talked to you a lot i've seen people complain about him taking early jumpers in transition there's a reason for that and you saw him do that repeatedly in this game. And when he's hot like that, those early transition jumpers are back-breaking shots. 
back-breaking shots. You don't even give the opponent a chance to defend that. Now, when you're running in transition, Zion can be open in the lane. Herb can be open in the lane. Trey can be open in the lane because you have to go and contest CJ McCollum on the three-point line. It was a fantastic performance from him. Just saying like I had a full control of what he was doing and knowing what this team was going to do against him. And this is going to pay dividends in the playoffs. Now, in the playoffs, when he and Zion Williamson run a pick and roll, or even these next two games, you can go under the screen on CJ because the second you do that, you go under the screen so you don't go above the guy setting the pick. You go under, you give CJ McCollum space. He's going to launch a three, and now you have to deal with that. So now you're probably going to go over the screen because of his three-point shooting. Good. That means you can't double Zion Williamson on his roll to the basket. All of what he is doing right now and the shots that he is taking are by design and important, and he's making them most importantly. He has looked fantastic over these past couple of games, and it's a big reason why the Pelicans are back in the running in control of the sixth seed here. He's been fan. He's been good all season long, shooting above 40% from three. They've needed something like that. The three-point shooting in general for this team is rather important. They do much better when they take a ton of threes. Guess how many they took in this game? 40. 22 for 40. That's 55%. Especially when the Sacramento Kings made 16 threes. Made 16 threes, which is a lot. They were 16 for 38. That's 42 and a, uh, 42%. That's a really good number, right? Well... You didn't get outshot from three. In fact, you outshot them. That's six made three. That's an 18-point difference right there because of the shots that the Pelicans were taking. That is important. Brandon Ingram is going to return Sunday against the Lakers. He's got to take threes because three-point shooting is so key for this team. And when C.J. McCollum goes 9 of 12, that's a great thing. Don't forget about Trey Murphy either. 6 of 12, getting a stroke going in this one. Five rebounds, four assists, just one turnover for him as well. He was fantastic. Jose Alvarado off the bench, making threes as well, going 4 of 6. Dyson Daniels. Going two of five. The three-point shooting is key to this team. Those guys taking shots and having the confidence to take them. Jose was feeling it. Dyson Daniels, who was a little bit hesitant in his return from injury in that first game back against Boston, kept shooting. The most impressive part to me was in the second half. If you forget it, it was the third or fourth quarter. He took a corner three, missed it. Got the ball back on the next possession or even the same possession off an offensive board and takes the shot and makes the shot. Wasn't scared. These guys rising to the moment to meet it and then hitting their shots those are fantastic look if you want to see Dyson develop the way it's going to be his defense is already great he had a couple of really great steals really good defensive plays in this game Um, but if he can make shots like that look out everybody right like look out rest of the league that is a very very good player with very very good size very good on defense and now he's going to score Yeah, that's going to be something that keeps opponents up at night. He had 10 off the bench. Jose Alvarado had 14 off the bench. Also, by the way, shout out to Cody Zeller. Awesome minutes in this one. Like that dude was just out there hustling. It was really fun to see. This was a game to go big. This was a game to go big. Jonas Valanciunas had an excellent game in this one, and I'm glad they played him 33 minutes. 13 points from him, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, just 2 turnovers. He was fantastic. He does really well against Demonis Sabonis. So this was a game where you wanted to go big. Larry Nance Jr. was ruled out. And it was one of those things of like, okay, they'll probably be just fine with all of this. Personal reasons for Larry Nance Jr. Because Jonas was great. They tried Jeremiah Robinson Earl for like a moment and realized that wasn't it. And so decided to go, again, size with Cody Zeller, who was just running around trying to set screens, set a couple of really good picks for Zion Williamson to spring him open. Getting good Cody Zeller minutes in this game tells you how things, once the Pelicans kind of regained their footing in this after the Sacramento Kings made it close, who. Oh, Sacramento, you let Cody Zeller have a very good game against you. What's that say? Also, I like Cody Zeller. Like, what's just a great team guy who just went out and just hustled his butt off in this one? And it's exactly what you wanted to see. But CJ McCollum with 31 points, the shooting that he provided and the the spacing there, it's about as important as it gets for the New Orleans Pelicans. Fantastic game from him. So coming up next, or do we want to talk about who else do we want to talk? No, that's that's about it. I think like those were the big performances. The three point shooting and all those guys kind of tying into that was good. You know, you saw just you know after 
again, there was just a resiliency to this team, right? You saw the Sacramento Kings counterpunch and get back into it. And New Orleans led wire to wire. I think they said on Inside the NBA after the game, this is the the Sacramento Kings who were the only team this season that has lost a game wire to wire, meaning they didn't lead at any point in time. New Orleans won this game wire to wire, beating the one team that, that hadn't happened to yet. Like, that's a pretty impressive performance and speaks to what this team was doing and what they were capable of doing and how they beat up a very good Sacramento Kings team. So it was great to see despite like some early turnovers, despite some things that were just not working for him, finding the offense, getting the superstar performance from Zion Williamson. Y'all, this was a great win because look, it makes the Sacramento Kings desperate. We're going to look at the standings. Sacramento Kings being desperate is really good because you know who they play next? The Phoenix Suns. Let's look up the standings, what the Pelicans need to do to secure the six seed. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about FanDuel because it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. It's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. And I love the layout. You just open the app. You can see all of the bets you want. You can find parlays. You can create your own parlays bets a little bit and then win a bigger payout when everything hits because you're a smart basketball fan here. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Again, that's $150 in bonus bets guaranteed win or lose when you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sports book and the official sports book of locked on. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this team. And guess what? We're going to get you set for the playoffs in person at Mid-City Yacht Club at 7 p.m. Central on Monday, this coming Monday the 15th. I'm going to do a regular episode of Locked On Pelicans with three guests, Aaron Summers, Will Guillory, Will Myers. We're going to get you set for the postseason. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then we're going to do a live Q&A. We'll hang out with y'all after the fact where we'll answer your questions. That'll also be posted to the Locked On Pelicans YouTube page. So subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. And become an everydayer. Listen Monday through Friday. That's what the everydayers do. Comment down below if you're an everydayer. Let me know how excited you are for the postseason. If you're going to come to the in-person show, let me know. It's going to be fantastic, and I can't wait. So I will see you all there at Mid-City Yacht Club Monday at 7 p.m. Central. All right, let's keep talking about the Pelicans and their chase for the 60. They're in pole position. They control their own destiny. They have two games remaining. Tonight, when you're listening to this, Friday night against the Golden State Warriors, and then Sunday at home, the season finale against the Los Angeles Lakers. If you win both of those, nothing else matters. You're the sixth seed. As simple as that. But if you win tomorrow night and beat the Golden State Warriors, who hung on barely to beat the Portland Trailblazers, who New Orleans just kind of like ran out, and the Phoenix Suns lose, you're in automatically as the sixth seed. Win one, they lose one, you're good to go. No matter what, that renders the final game of the regular season meaningless, meaning guys can get rest or whatever, and that's an important thing. And here's what I love about this win, and we talked about it in yesterday's show too, right? We talked about the wins you wanted to see and then what we're rooting for after. They're starting to come true. This is why you listen to Locked On Pelicans. Again, the number one Pelicans podcast. You just made the Sacramento, or the Pelicans just made the Sacramento Kings desperate right now the eighth ninth and tenth seed are all tied on record sacramento is in eighth golden state warriors are in ninth and the los angeles lakers are in tenth there's a significant difference a significant difference between being the eighth and ninth seat if you're finished seven or eight in the playing tournament you have two chances to win one game to go to the playoffs if you're the ninth or tenth seed you have to win two games in a row Win one in two or two and oh, there's a huge difference there, right? You don't want to be the ninth or 10th seed. You want to be the seventh or eighth. So all you have to do is win one game. That's big. That's important. Well, Sacramento is now tied with the Golden State Warriors. They have the tiebreaker there. So they're eighth. But if they lose and the Golden State Warriors win, whatever game that might be, hopefully not tonight against the Pelicans, 
their, their fortunes really change. So they desperately need to win to not lose ground here. That's good news because they play the Phoenix Suns on Friday. Phoenix is the only competition now for the seventh for the sixth seed for the New Orleans Pelicans. And if Phoenix loses and New Orleans wins, Pelicans are the sixth seed there in the postseason. You don't need to worry about going through the play-in tournament. So a desperate now, desperate Sacramento Kings team dealing with De'Aaron Fox who kind of rolled his ankle. We'll see if that's significant, but you would imagine he's going to play through it. Goes up against the Phoenix Suns team. Sacramento can't get the seventh seed at this point, right? But they can fall down in the standings. So they have every incentive to beat Phoenix. They need this win. They desperately need this win. So this is a game that they are going to try super duper hard for. Good. Here's what's awesome about this win, right? You just, you, you can control what you can control. That's a, it's just a life lesson for everyone, right? That's an important one I learned when I was younger. And you're doing that. But if you can harm your opponents in the meantime too, it's just kind of collateral damage of your wins. Sign me up for that, right? You just put the Sacramento Kings and put them on the ropes. Their season is potentially going to be in ruin because of this loss. It's true. And they were embarrassed 5-0 and in one season against a team. They have to win the next game. They have to, otherwise it feels like their season is over. So they are going to come out and they're going to do everything in their power to try and win that game. I love that, right? They're going to take it to a Phoenix Suns team that has been anything but inspiring despite beating the Los Angeles Clippers the other night, even though the Clippers had a big lead in that game. Come on, y'all. They didn't play anyone and it took until the fourth quarter for Phoenix to go and do that. And in this one, I'm pulling up the game. Sacramento's at home. You're at home. You just got embarrassed by the Pelicans for the fifth time this season. They're going to come out and they're going to take it to Phoenix. They may not win, but they're going to put Phoenix on, uh, play them as hard as possible. And then Phoenix in their final game of the regular season takes on the Minnesota Timberwolves who are in their own fight for the one seed, the two seed, the three seed. New Orleans might have nothing to play for on the final game of the regular season, but even if there is something to play for, they're going to have the easier game against the Lakers than the Phoenix Suns going up against the Minnesota Timberwolves, who probably want to end the season on a high note and are getting Carl Anthony Towns back. Things are lining up really well for New Orleans. Now, control what you can control. We just talked about it. Go 2-0. Don't, don't leave it up to chance. Don't ask for help need help, anything like that. The way the Pelicans came out of this game, just ready to fight, getting that 20-point lead in the first quarter, showed you that they were mentally ready. The way Zion Williamson came out in the third, despite the injury and all of the frustrations, showing you something that we have not quite seen from him yet, but was truly impressive. All of that. I think this team's ready. But if you can also rest on the final day of the regular season a little bit, play guys ha a half, whatever it might be, that is the way to go. I know we all want to see like a competitive game in the Smoothie King Center on Sunday, but hey, they got nothing to play for and we can just enjoy ourselves, party a little bit, get you all set for Monday in the live show that we're going to do at Mid-City Yacht Club, 7 p.m. Central. It's going, to be, it's going to be a fun end of the year and New Orleans just took it to a team and made them desperate. I love that. Love what they did in this game. Everything was great. I'm looking forward to the postseason, whatever it is. Maybe things don't go their way and we have to go through the playing tournament. You're feeling good about this team right now, though, as am I. And I'm excited to do more games, cover this more for you because we ain't stopping here just yet. So that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. Bonus episode over the weekend to talk about the game against the Warriors, what it means for the standings and all that, even if it's a short show that I'll record on Saturday morning, something like that. So I'm looking forward to seeing y'all again over the weekend and then getting you set for the postseason, whatever that looks like, the in-person live episode of Locked on Pelicans, I will see you at Mid-City Yacht Club. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Thank you all so much for listening. Please subscribe. Join almost 10,000 other Pelicans fans on YouTube. Tell a friend about the show. Tell them about Locked on Pelicans, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'll be back with y'all tomorrow at some point.